You are listening to the Getting Lucky Mixed Martial Arts Podcast. I am your host, Lucky Robert Curtis. Today, we are going to be previewing the UFC on Fox, Johnson vs. Dodds in UFC on Fox 6. And to help us do that, we're welcoming back our dear friend, Marcus Mitchell. How's it, how's it going? Come on, Mitchell. I'm going to need you to raise your energy up just a little bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, get yourselves ready for a flyweight action-packed adventure with a mighty, mighty mouse. I think my nipples got hard. Ooh. Well, I'll tell you they did. I can see them. <laughs> well, that's pretty amazing considering we're roughly 14,000 miles apart. Yeah. This event, as you said, features the flyweight championship, Demetrius Johnson versus John Dodson. But first... There's a Facebook fight in the prelims. Simeon Thorazine. Thorazine? Sounds like something you would put in your eye when your eye hurts. 17-3-1 coming off of a loss versus David Mitchell. 11-2 on a three-fight losing streak. Is any relation? Uh, no, since it's... Uh, no, that's not related to me. Okay, damn. I was going to pick him just because of that. <laughs> It could be safe. I mean, obviously, we have that Mitchell is a uh, submission artist. I don't know if I've ever come out and said this, but I prefer submission fighters. But so is the so is the Visine man, uh, Simeon the Grin, from Norway. <laughs> so uh, they're both submission artists. I think it should be a fun little fight for Facebook, and maybe it'll get either of them mentioned or noticed. I guess. Wait, wait a second. You're a sub- you prefer submission fighters, but yet you have a hard on for British fighters. What? Uh, how do you I explain pref- that? I I like all right. So obviously submissions have gone you know almost the way of the the dodo bird uh, the dodo bird. But um, they're they're obviously decreasing quite a bit in the UFC at least, and it's just fun to see. It's it's something a submission is something that uh, your opponent has worked and worked and worked and worked to avoid, and you still catch him. It's something that any fighter at that level should know. Okay, he's putting his arm here. Where I got to defend a triangle choke. I mean a. a arm triangle. So it's just interesting when somebody can catch somebody. I always liked uh, Babalu throwing somebody in submission. So yes, I like submission fighters. So who, who are you picking here? I'm going with the uh, the Visine man himself. I'm going to go with your cousin, the- David Mitchell. <laughs> Let's go to the FX card. Uh, surprisingly, the Australian Open is on right now, right as we speak. And yet somehow, Rafael Nadal is flying all the way back to fight Sean Spencer. I see what you did there. Thank you. Rafael Natal, 14-4-1, coming off of a loss. Uh, I believe a head kick to Andrew Craig. Uh, Techno Viking. Versus Sean Spencer, <laughs> making a promotional debut. He's 9-1 and one on a three-fight winning streak. Sean Spencer has a very cool nickname. Unleash it. Black Magic. I am going to... I guess one up you with um the I guess the next fighter. The next fight has a better nickname I think. So we'll get to that in a minute. All right. I think uh Natal's experience is going to you know not which 9 and 1. I don't I don't think that's going to do much Natal and his UFC experience. I think he takes this. Yeah, I think I think Raphael's got a wicked backhand. He's vicious <laughs> on the baseline. I, I see I see him finishing him off in straight sets. <laughs> I, I do think it'll go to decision, so I'll, I'll agree with the straight sets. Thank you. Uh, welterweight, uh, the guy who's... I, I, every event, I try to pick a guy whose name I like the best. Last event, it was Masaranduba. This event, <laughs> it's going to be Mike Stumpf. Mike Stumpf. Stumpf. Uh, in my fraternity, my big brother, you know, we're sort of adopted by older members of the fraternity to guide us into the pathway of being fraternal young men, even though I'm older than this guy. His last name is Stumpf as well. Uh, he's a... facing off against Pascal Kraus. 10-1, and one, coming off of a loss. Uh, there's a famous musician named Patrick Stumpf. Um, he just happens to be the lead singer of Fall Out Boy, because, you know, Fall Out Boy and MMA, everybody, everybody enjoys those two together. Um, Never what do you Fallout Boy? Fallout Boy. Oh, good. good. Well, whatever. What uh, What do you What do you choose over there, senior citizen in Australia? 
Who I, you like? I'm going to choose my big from Phi Gamma Delta. I'm going to choose Mike Stump. I'm going with the nickname that I enjoy the most on this card. Uh, Pascal Kraus, his nickname is Panzer, and he's from Germany. I think that no. is bad. I think that is badass. A guy named Pascal Kraus is from Germany. I did, I, I just had the f- whatever. I, but I Panzer, it was Utah. Panzer, I quite enjoy it. Well, you're you're Robert Curtis in Australia. That doesn't even make any sense. So I'm, I'm super not for Australia. Just, just <laughs> suck it, suck it. Uh, okay, you can call me uh, Bobo if you want. <laughs> I might. Me. I'm Bobo. <laughs> uh, <laughs> let's go to the heavyweights. Mike Russo. 15 and 2 with one no contest coming off of a loss versus Sean Jordan 13 and 4 also coming off of a loss you know funny thing about Mike Russo this guy was stacking up wins left and right in fact he was on a 10 fight winning streak in some regards you might say there's another heavyweight fighter that also went on a massive winning streak Fedor Emelianenko Mike Russo is Fedor Emelianenko and I can prove it a step further who shattered the winning streak, Fabrizio Verdum? Fabrizio. Mike Russo is the next emperor. Clearly, I have to choose him in this fight. I'm going to go ahead and uh, just, you know, if I were the host, I would quit kick you off the show now because that was stupid. Uh, Sean Jordan is going to destroy him. Uh, no, no ifs, ands, or buts there. You think so? I think so. Sean the Savage? Absolutely. Absolutely he will. He took Czech Congo to a decision, albeit it wasn't a phenomenal fight. Um, e. But <laughs> I know. But uh, I think uh, his work will speak for itself on Saturday. I think Mike Russo. Mike Russo will be put in his place. He's a Jackson fighter. Good old Sean Jordan. Yeah. But Russo's the next emperor. I have to stick with my guns here. He, he is Fedor reincarnate. Out. He knocked out his, our cheerleader. His name is Mikhail Emelianenko. Younger brother to Alex. <laughs> Let's go to the next fight, light heavyweight, and there's there's a little guy in Boise, Iowa, Boise, uh, Idaho, Idaho, yes, wherever Boise is. It's, <laughs> not, it's an I state, Indiana, Illinois, somewhere over there. <laughs> Ryan Bader, fourteen and three, coming off of a loss versus the janitor Vladimir Medyushenko, twenty six and six, also coming off of a loss. This is a tune up for Bader, isn't it? This is, and that's all Matt Yushchenko has been reduced to at this point in his career, which I guess is rough considering this guy fought for the UFC light heavyweight championship 12 years ago. Um, that's going way, way back. But, no, I think this is a tune-up. It should. It's interesting to see Bader's name not on the main card. Yeah, in fact, three fights out of the main card. Right. Uh, Bader has had trouble with strikers. Uh, he lost to Machida. Well, I guess he, I guess Tito and John Jones can't really be considered strikers. But he rebounded nicely with Jackson and Brills. Uh, this is a tune-up for Bader. He'll out-wrestle Vladimir Matyushenko, who is 75 yeah. years old. I believe he's actually one of the uh, original revolutionaries in Red October. <laughs> <laughs> I think if you if you take Tito Ortiz aside, I think uh, Bader's two losses losses were legit. But going back to the Leota Machida fight, how outmatched he looked was just surprising. Leota Leota looked like he could have done whatever he wanted in that fight. So I'm going to go with Bader, obviously. But I hope we see better a better job from him this time. Do you think that uh, because Lyoto Machida famously drinks his own urine, that that affects wrestlers' game plans? Like, I don't want to smell his breath? I wonder if he drinks enough urine that his skin begins to smell like it. And then he sweats it. Do you think? I no? I don't know. I don't know. You don't... That's, some, that's something that we should find out. I think Tom should have I'll to drink to get his you, own piss. I'll get you press passes. <laughs> 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 and you start licking Lyoto's skin. Mmm... Distinct flavor of urine. Uh, I'm going for Bader here. I don't think anyone's going for Matt Yushchenko. Making his debut at featherweight is Clay Guida. Clay Guida is 29 and 13. He's coming off of a two-fight losing streak. Apparently, he's he's given up marathons, and now he's back to fighting. Versus Hiyoki, 26-5 and 2, off of a 
one fight losing streak. What's Hioki's first name? Uh, Hatsu? Bless you. <laughs> Bazinga. Bazinga, indeed. Actually, isn't his first name Hioki? No idea, but you fell for it. So when I don't know I what they the do over there. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. <laughs> uh, Clint got... Guida, the carpenter. I don't even know if he deserves that name anymore. Uh, run, Forest, run. He looked horrible in his fight against Gray Maynard, and then the little stuff that he did, back show, and in the press conference... Has anyone lost more fan equity than Clay Guida in 2012? He he was a big fan favorite, I know. I've never been a huge favorite fan of him. But what he did in that Maynard fight, and especially what he did afterward, was just it was heinous. I, 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 almost, I never root for him, and I, I, this fight's going to be no different for me. I do want Hatsu Hiyoki to win, uh, and I also never really cheered for Clay Guida. Uh... Because he, he did take a lot of beatings, and I kind of felt like he has Asperger's. <laughs> Nothing against people with Asperger's. It's, it's just... amazing what he's been able to do with such a drawback to his life. Yeah, and I hate fighters that fight with long hair. Because it's uh, always in their eyes. It drives me nuts. I don't have a problem with that so much. If I fought a dude with long hair, I would pull his hair. Ooh. I would. I've heard, I've heard about you doing that before. And I'd grow my fingers nails out and try to scratch out their eyes. Do you do you think there's any credence to uh, I guess the rumor that Clay Guida, with his long hair, decides not to shower like a month before the fight? So when he is grinding himself all over his opponent, they smell that. Do you do you think? Yeah, I completely disagree with that. I don't think that Clay Guida intentionally doesn't shower so that people think he smells. I just think he just doesn't shower normally. Right, it's not intentional. No, it's not I, intentional. I, I think giving you. him that much... And, and Greg Jackson was probably like, ooh, he's, ooh this is a good thing. He stinks. <laughs> Keep doing what you're doing, Guida. I think every morning when, when training camp opens, he comes in from the wild where he sleeps with wolves, trains for a little bit, and then wanders back out. And they probably, right before a pre-fight, they have to pick all the brambles and sticks out of his hair. <laughs> he, do, I, I wouldn't say Guida uh, should be the carpenter. He, do, he definitely looks like uh, Neanderthal. I'd go with that. But Jungle Book. I, <laughs> yes. I I just can't after Nate Diaz and Anthony Pettis fights with him, I can't root for him. I always yeah. hope he loses. Let's talk about the lightweight matchup, the last prelim card, finishing out the FX string of fights. TJ Grant, nineteen and five, off of a three fight winning streak versus Matt Wyman, fifteen and six off of a two-fight winning streak. Before we talked about this show, we talked about the card a little bit, and I said I thought the prelims were, were from top to bottom, kind of weak. And this fight illustrates why. Do you realize that out of the first, oh, what is it, six fights, 12 fighters, uh, we have to get to the seventh fight before we get a single fighter coming off of a win? Oh, that's, that's impressive. Yeah, TJ Grant, three-fight winning streak. Matt Wyman, two-fight winning streak. Everyone else coming off of losses, except for Sean Spencer, but... He wasn't in the UFC yet. No, this and this is their. I mean, I guess this is their time to to pick it up for those other fighters. This is their time to get it together. Uh, especially you think about Ryan Bader; he's got some figuring out to do. So, I mean, it, maybe maybe it was intentional on Dana's part, but there are a lot of fighters going through it right now, and this is their time to to get it back. Yeah, this to me this should be an FX undercard. Like, the, FR, the undercard we just had in Brazil was mm-hmm. brilliant. So let's swap those cards, assuming all of those Brazilians can get visas and passports, and, and, and make them fight on Fox. What do you think I about think, this fight? Uh, I think that uh, I'm going with Grant, uh, again, yes. a submission fighter. Um, but back to the, the undercard thing, I disagree. I think, I think this is a decent decent undercard. I don't think it should be relegated to... Well, other athletes. than the next emperor, Mikhail Rusov, <laughs> <laughs> who else is on here that is just lights out awesome? Uh, I mean, you have names on here, and that's what's important, I think. Sure, it's like a strike force card, kind of. You have Ryan Bader going against over the, over the, over the hill, Vlad, Vladimir, and you have Clay Guida. He's a name, whether you like it or not. And I don't know. I think those names, in particular, throwing them on a prelim card... Uh, you know, I I would expect those to, guys to be on uh, a main card of a of a pay per view. So, yeah, I, I I like your comparison to a Strike Force card, 
may they rest in peace. Yeah. Uh, what do you think about T.J. Grant? And Matt? You like T.J. Grant? I like T.J. Grant. He's a submission guy. Um, again, it's already been made clear that I like that. Uh, yes. I think he comes out here. He he shows his dominance. He's got uh, quite a bit of victory, or he's got four victories over um, Matt Wyman's fifteen. He's got nineteen to himself. So I think he comes out and he's looking for the sub. If he can't get it, um, oh God, he is going up against somebody who just subbed Paul Sass. But I think he goes for the submission. I think he gets it. There's a guy in my high school named T.J. Grant. No relation, and for the very same reasons I've been picking all the other fights, I'm going with T.J. Grant too. <laughs> it's you almost like, like you. It's almost like you know all these fighters by I association. I do. I do. T.J. Grant, uh, guy that posed for his senior picture with a uh, Confederate flag behind him. Class of '71. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, my pacemaker! Stop. <laughs> Let's talk about the main card. Let's do it. Depending on how politically correct you want to be. The first fighter's name is Eric Koch or Eric Koch. I was going to go with Coke on those. Coke. Let's go with Koch. Okay. Eric Koch. 13 and 1, <laughs> four fight winning streak versus Lorenzo Lamas' little brother Ricardo. 12 and 2, three fight winning streak. Do you know who Lorenzo Lamas is? I have no idea. He's a really B star martial artist, ponytail. Anyway, let's not talk about it. Another age difference. He was big in the 80s. Who do you like? Sure uh, I like Koch, Eric Koch. Um, I, th- I thought he was uh, a-, a contender down in the WEC. I liked him down there. Uh, he lost to Chad Mendez, another fighter I-, I don't really root for. He he was a decision machine down in WEC. But um, I'm going for Koch. Um, I-, I don't know. I have a thing, I guess, for certain fighters, and I, I guess I have a thing for him. Ooh. Although L- Lamas is Lamas, uh, when he wins, he is devastating. He is he is a contender. He's definitely a fighter. You've got Eric the New Breed Cook versus Ricardo the Bully Lamas, or if you want to say it differently, Lamas. Lamas. Yeah. I don't think you should give any respect to how a person is supposed to say their name from their country. So it can be Lamas. We'll we'll super Americanize it. Uh, I think he is. He's from a Miami, Miami uh, Beach. So we can say llamas. We'll go with llamas. Like a Castillo llamas. should be a Castillo. Things like that. Uh, and then thus Eric, Eric's name is Cock. Right. Well, I'm still going to give it the the Coke, but Coke. I, I want to hear. Say, I want to hear Mike Goldberg call him Eric Cock, though. I'm going to say Ricardo Dor is going to eat him some cock. Oh. I don't know gonna, what that means as far as who you think will win, because that reference that, that's a little weird. In my I brain. think he's gonna. I think Ricardo's gonna win. You think he's gonna eat him some cock, Eric? All right. uh, you know, like yep. metaphorically yep. speaking. Uh huh. <laughs> All right. The next fight is clearly the class of the card. Oh my good god! Yes, it is. Anthony Showtime Pettis, fifteen and two, two fight winning streak, versus Donald the Cowboy Cerrone. 19 and 4 with one no contest, two fight winning streak coming off in the destruction of Melvin Gillard. This should be the best fight of the night. I I don't want you to ask me who I think will win cuz I don't care. I don't even care. I everyone want, wins. Everyone wins with this fight. Yes. It, first of all, finally we're getting to see Showtime again. It feels like it's been forever. Um it feels like I, He's so much fun to watch. It just always feels like between fights it is forever, and it has been almost a year, sure, but I can't I can't wait. I'm so stoked for this fight. I think Showtime has less of a pedigree in competition that he's faced. And I want to see him string together a couple more victories over guys like Cerrone. Uh, I think a lot of what Showtime's reputation was was that Ben Henderson victory. Obviously, Mm -hmm. the Showtime kick straight out of the Matrix. Mm -hmm. I will wager a guess. I think Donald Cerrone will win this by decision. If if I wanted to wager a guess, um, and that's very that that's very probable, I'm gonna say uh, Pettis wins, and here's why. 
what Nate Diaz was able to do to Donald Cerrone, just completely confuse him and put him in this place where he didn't know what to do. As as experienced as he is, I think Pettis is going to give him this this. He's going to put him in that same mindset. Pettis is going to confuse him, and he's going to dominate him in a way that he's not the Cowboys not used to. And uh, I think he he wins. Not dominantly, not not viciously, but I'm going to give it Pettis. Now, just to throw this out here, our guy Leonard Garcia is like best friends with Donald Cowboy Cerrone. Does that change your pick? Uh, I'd love to have Cowboy on the show, and I can't wait to see him fight. Um, I w- again, I wouldn't be surprised if Cerrone knocked Pettis out. I wouldn't be surprised how this fight went. But if I had to, if I had to, and put if money Kim on Winslow it. is refing, anything can happen. Like, yeah, a, like a band of midgets can come in a clown car and start beating people with bats. That could happen. Listen, if we get to see Kim Winslow fight again, or referee, <laughs> everybody wins. If we get to see her fight, uh, oh my god, I'd love to see her fight Ronda Rousey. I have a feeling that Kim Winslow would win because you can't beat Skeletor. You can only pull out her weave. <laughs> Let's talk about the light heavyweight fight. Rousey's first defeat. <laughs> yes. <laughs> By Wait, a cervical suplex. Yes, let's move on. <laughs> Quentin Jackson, a.k.a. our guy Rampage, 32-10, and 10, two losses in a row, versus the sensation of the light heavyweights, Glover to share at 19 and 2 off of a let me clear my throat. <clears> 17 <throat> fight winning streak. 17. I feel like the principal in Ferris Bueller's day off. He has missed school nine times. <laughs> nine. 17 fight winning streak. Now, if you wanted to call somebody a uh, little Fedor, 17's more respectable. Than yes, Mikhail. Mikhail Rusov. But let's, I mean, let's break down his 17 fight win streak. Let's do it. I'm excited for this. We know Marcio Cruz because he beat Frank Mir. Hmm. And nobody credits Frank Mir as legitimately, lo- like, that's not a legitimate loss because of the accident. He recently beat Marvin Eastman. Did you know that Marvin Eastman even still fought? I didn't realize Marvin Eastman was still alive. Right. After that cut to his face, and I'm going to not just say forehead, I'm going to say face, because it took up his whole face. It was kind of wrapped around from his eyebrow all the way back behind his ear. Yeah, I just assume after that happens, you just go ahead and, you know, I'm not getting punched in the face anymore. And he fought Eastman in 2011. Right. And Eastman had a fight as recently as uh, six months ago. Isn't that a crime to beat up on senior citizens? Would he take his social security check after the fight? And he then, also Rico Rodriguez. Yeah, yeah, another person. Why is he still fighting? Does he have a thing against old people? I don't know, but he did come in and look unbelievably dominant against Kingsbury. And then I felt he he fought Fabio Maldonado to the point where I felt sorry for Maldonado in thirty seconds. So yes. I'm not saying he's not legit, but. Anything can happen in this sport, but come on, sometimes 17 win streak against these kinds of guys. Not buying it. Well, he also fought Sokaju, and... Uh, and he did um, beat my boy Ed Herman. Or he lost, I'm sorry, he lost to my boy Ed Herman, so, you know. Uh, I'm really struggling to find India. Ooh, ooh, Argentine Nascimento? Hmm? Who wants Nascimento cheese? <laughs> uh, but regardless of whether or not the 17 fights are, are legit... Or awesome, Oregon's great competition. He walks through Quentin. Walks through. Oh yeah, Quentin is washed up. I'm gonna disagree with that. Ooh. I'm gonna disagree with walking through. Okay. I think he, I think he beats Rampage, but I don't think Rampage gets walked through. I don't see Glover Teixeira coming in here and trying to wrestle. That's the only way Rampage gets walked through. I well okay let's so let's let's look at this. Uh, <laughs> Rampage beats Keith Jardine, yay! Then takes uh, seventeen years off to film the epic trilogy, uh, the A Team. Then he loses to Rashad Evans in dominant fashion. He thinks he loses to Leota Machida, and I do too. I do via too. 
and he he wins split decision. He beats up a handicapped person. That's not very nice. Matt Hamill. He gets destroyed by John Jones. He gets decisioned by Ryan Bader. Uh, the last three years have not been very kind to Rampage. Okay, but let's let's go again. Let's run back through that. He's fought a who's who of the late heavyweight division. Going before that, Chuck Liddell, Dan Henderson, Forrest Griffin, Wanderlei Silva, Keith Jardine, and Rashad. Six years ago, he's uh, yeah, washed yeah. up. The only th- the only thing he beats up is sushi vagina. <laughs> I do not believe that he will get walked through. I also don't. Uh, this is a guy who will lose to wrestlers. This Rashad is a guy Evans who gasses in. in two minutes. He does. I don't think. Tashera is gonna. Get, I don't think Tashera wants to get hit by him, because Tashera knows. Anybody knows. Rampage can hit, and if Tashera wants to strike, that's fine. But he's got to be ready for Rampage's last hurrah. Listen, Rampage's last hurrah was supposed to be in Saitama, Japan, when he fought Ryan Bader. You remember all the talking he was doing then? Sure. Like, this is gonna be the real Rampage. I'm gonna come out. I'm gonna put on a show. His show consisted of a five-second slam, and then he was gassed. Yeah, but he's fight again. He's fighting. He was fighting a wrestler. Re- he doesn't do well against wrestlers. He, he and and to his to go against, I guess, his mindset. This is MMA. For him to still here in 2013 be talking about don't wrestle me. That's pussy stuff. No, that is part of the game. Leg you kicks. Figured that out. What are right. leg kicks? Yeah, your leg was almost broken by Forrest Griffin. And by the way, if you want to say Forrest Griffin didn't win that, f you. But. You're saying that he's washed up, and, and that may be true. He's 34. Teixeira's 33. Teixeira looks a lot younger than Rampage. But uh, I don't think, unless you're a wrestler, I don't see somebody walking through Rampage. All right, so Rampage is 34, 35. Mm-hmm, 34. But he started fighting in 1999. Right. He, no, he's, 99. 99. He's old. Uh in terms of mileage, in, in, in his yes, in mileage with forty-two fights mm-hmm. in a fourteen-year career, will not be walked through. Is washed up. No, is He's, washed up. He recently fought for the UFC light heavyweight championship. He had the UFC light heavyweight championship or champ belt. He defended it. Uh, he. I don't think he gets walked through. He, he, he unified the strike force and UFC belts in 2007. You cannot let's have, let's, bring that up. Let's let's put a bet. Let's put a bet down on this. Some type of show bet. All right. What do you got I'm for me? You're, that you're Glover, creative. I'm, I'm betting that Glover wins. I, I'm, I, I already said Glover will win. I don't think he gets walked through is what I'm saying. What, what, what constitutes walk through? The first round dominant uh, TKO KO. Uh, I'm thinking second round TKO. Okay. Does that does that warranting a bet? If it makes if it makes if it makes it to the third round, and Rampage well, obviously Rampage uh, hasn't been knocked out, but if it makes it to the third round or Rampage wins, uh, we'll go with that. How about how does that sound? Okay. So that's right. what I'm betting. It'll make it to the third round or Rampage will win before then. But I still and, I I think Glover will win, but not before the third round. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So you think it'll either be a third round finish or a decision? Correct. Gotcha. What are the stakes? Well, you're the creative one. I was hoping you'd come up with something. Let's turn it over to our listeners. When I yep. win this bet, what do you want to make Mitchell do? <laughs> Anything is game. You want him to take pictures of his private parts and post it on the internet? Well, he's already done that, but we'll do it again. <laughs> no. Huh? Hey, hey, All right. You know, that's neither here nor there. I like that. Let, leave it to the listeners. Listeners come up with something, and the winner of our little bet will get to enjoy, as the loser does, whatever you decide. Whatever nefarious torture you come up with. Let's talk about the final fight, which, to be honest, I think is kind of a clash of symbols, and then uh, all the trumpets go... Really? Demetrius Johnson. Oh yeah, I'm not excited for this fight at all. Demetrius Johnson, 16, 2 and 1 off a two fight losing streak, the current flyweight champion, facing off against the most annoying Cabbage Patch doll ever, John Dodson, 14 and 5 on a five fight winning streak. Is John Dodson insane? I'm excited to see John Dodson fight. I think he's contrived. His little he's... flips and laughing and his stupid smile. 
He's the magician. Give me a break. Do so you want to see Harry Potter in the cage? <laughs> no. I, I want to see... clone him! I, I want to see Mighty Mouse lose, I'll tell you that. I don't know if okay. Dodson's the guy I want to see win, but I was hoping it would have been, you know... Unless uh, Ian McCall Ian is McCall. champion, I, I am... Unless Uncle Creepy is holding the strap, I am kind of boycotting the flyweights. That's yeah, he's who I wanted to to win as well. Yes, I mean, it's his own fault that he didn't train for the rematch, but uh, he should have won the first fight had they had the extra round like they were supposed to. I think um, I think Demetrius Johnson wins this by boring decision. Yep. And then I think John Moraga shows up in six months and decapitates. Demetrius Johnson. That would be the dream scenario here. Yes. I go with that. I do think I it do is too. a little... It's kind of a bummer that uh, that we do think of the flyweights like that, but when your champion is, is somebody like Demetrius Johnson... No, no doubt he's extremely fast and, and give him all the credit in the world, but he's looking for a decision. I know he... If, if, if your champion in the flyweights was a guy like Aldo, then I'd be all in. Right. Um, but I like wrestlers, but it seems to me like Demetrius Johnson is uh, the most unexciting champion in the UFC. Mm-hmm. Who else would be up there? I mean, I totally top to agree bottom. I mean, GSP, if he's facing a wrestler, he'll strike. You know, and his takedowns are beautiful. Uh, I don't GSP know. will beat you at whatever at whatever it is you think you're good at. That's what GSP can beat you at. Yes. Um. And my uh, wife, by the way, thinks he looks incredibly handsome. GSP? So, yes. Every time we watch, she says, I just can't believe his butt is so big. Because, you know, <laughs> apparently she likes big butts, and she cannot lie. So I'm like, excuse me, I'm trying to watch the fighting. And then in my head, I'm like, oh, my God, he does have a big butt. <laughs> that kind of kills it, I'm sure. Yes. Yes. I am married to my career. <laughs> I got the, I got Mighty Mouse in this one. I think again, everybody's got to have Mighty Mouse. If if John Dodson wins this, and we have to listen to his contrived "I'm very happy, go lucky guy" speech at the end with with Joe Rogan, or it'll be it'll be Rogan for Fox One. It won't be uh, Anik and Florian. No, uh, yeah, it should be Rogan. Yeah, then uh, I may just have to turn the TV off and quit the podcast. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't like contrived. Uh, stage personalities. Like I kind of don't like Bruce Leroy for you know when he was on Tough, he would smile during the whole fight. I don't like this John Dodson shtick he's got going. Hey, just be know. yourself. Don't. I don't know why he has to try to do his little silly child's play. F- yeah, laugh that he does. It just it's like nails on a chalkboard to me. <laughs> this season of Tough then should be a lot of fun for you. Speaking of this season of Tough, did you watch the first episode? I did. Absolutely, I did. I am loving me some Chael Sonnen. Really? Yeah, I thought he was pretty funny to John Jones. Yeah, it was funny when he was like, you know, you got to pick you gotta pick your guy. Otherwise, right. the next ten years is going to be weird. But that little clip they had where it said, um, where did violent, where did anger, outrage, uh, sadness ever do to get your name marked down by a judge? These are what make your mark. And he holds up his fist. I was like, wow. That's powerful stuff. Yeah. This is, this is like uh, the best part of the Rocky movies was um, Duke, the trainer for Apollo that came over to Rocky. Yes, he absolutely was. Yeah. You're the one that's going to make sure Apollo didn't die for nothing. Chael Sonnen can be that guy. He's a great commentator. Ten years, when he gets a little bit grayer and he's no longer fighting, start sticking him into these sports inspirational movies. I don't care what sport. Golf. <laughs> Get Chelsea in there and have him do the pre, the pre, exciting climax, pump him up speech. I I thought Chelsea was good. I thought there was a San, a San, Saman fighter, the guy that was trying to do the double fist crap. Uh, yeah, Salmon. Oh, I cannot wait Salmon. to see him fully knocked out. He's juiced. I think. I think you're right. He's I juiced. absolutely think he's roiding. If you look at it, the, first of all, his behavior. Acne. But acne. The acne. The acne. Yes. He, he's he's clearly juicing. And had he not been an ultimate fighter, he'd be one of those guys that I thought had pec implants because he's got that <laughs> metrosexual body. You know what I he mean? He does. He does. I see him as one of the – if you've ever watched uh, professional wrestling, he's one of those guys that comes out on like that Saturday night show 
which the WWE doesn't throw any money into. He's like that unknown guy that goes by his actual name. Yeah. He, he he should be that guy for the UFC. The guy that they just put in there. And they don't ever cut him. They just let him get continually beat to crap. And then showing up with his stupid list over who he wants to fight. You can I tell know. But he's like, he's like, he's like the, one of these guys that comes into Survivor that has watched every episode and has like gamed out his little strategy for how he's going to win. Rather than just coming to into the show. I think that's what he's done with the Ultimate Fighter. He's like, I want to fight first because that way everyone will be raw. And everyone will be out of shape. And I didn't take a lot of damage in my fight. That's my best chance to advance. I hate that. I'm pretty sure I'm going to hate him more than any other fighter on the Ultimate Fighter. I, I think I'll agree. And, and then he cried when John fucking Jones, John Jones, said, Nah, I'm not listening to you because who are you? I'm going to go with what I decide. Yeah. Random salmon guy. Salmon. 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 Hope he gets his jaw rewired, reconstructed. I don't now, know. last question before we hop off. There's a guy on the show, and they had previews of this with the ambulance. There's a guy on the show that goes through a couple of his fights with vicious, vicious knockouts. Mm-hmm. But I don't think we really learned who that was. Who do you think it is out of the guys that made it in? I th- there's two that I'm going to guess, but... Um, the dude I with the wanna... braids? He the was one guy. The dude with the braids, Clint... Clint Demp... Clint something. Hester. 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 You said Clint Dempsey. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say Clint Dempsey, but uh, Cl- if Clint it's Hester. not him, it's Uriah Hall. Yeah, I think I think your, our, our, our two brothers, our two black guys, are going to be the yeah, ones that... but anybody listening, please tell me that you think Uriah Hall is miniature Chet Congo. He looks just like Chet Congo, I think. And he even wears the glasses outside in the interviews. Yep, yep. that is amazing. But how respectful uh, was he... After his dominant vic- after his victory, how are yeah, and that, and the thing is, is that they, they, they've got these fighters in there, and they're like they'll be a wild card. But honestly, I think there were a couple of fighters that didn't make the show that lost that, in this uh, fight to get into the house that are probably more worthy. And Uriah Hall's opponent, whose name slips my mind, yeah, he um, was he definitely should get in there. Yeah, he was tough as nails. Let me find mm-hmm. him. Andy Inns. Inns. Yeah, his fights uh, from Alaska, right? I think he's from Alaska. I think he's from Alaska, and Andy Inns sounds like a like a rap name, like that's his MC name, Andy Inns. <laughs> I Inns, thought he was worth, I thought he was worthy worthy of fighting, uh, and could replace a number of the fighters that did get in. It, it, I guess it's all about matchups. And when he stepped into that cage and saw Uriah Hall across from, he put he put one heck of a fight together. But he did. He, he ate he some punches too. Yep. That, that body shot. I, one last thing, Lou Bercier, the uh, the Native American. It just crushes me that these guys don't produce better fighters. I would love to see a Native American fighter like uh, the guy that was uh, what was his name? Dane. The He was on a previous season I think with Rampage and Rashad Evans mm-hmm. from Wyoming. Uh, he had tons of heart but just didn't have the technical skill. I, they, some, some coach needs to do a philanthropic thing. Greg Jackson, go to some of these reservations and just start training these Native Americans because much like in the inner city or in these other impoverished countries like Brazil, martial arts will save these guys from a life of violence, a life of drug use. That's exactly what these reservations need. And I'm telling you, Native Americans are freaking warriors from the inside out. Get yep. these guys into MMA. I can't he, wait. He it looked unbelievably heart. tough. I know. When they were doing oh, yeah. the interview with him, the, the pre-fight thing. And just Scars his and his nose right. in a different... His nose yeah. was totally the wrong way. And then they step in the cage and you can see he's... You know, yeah. kind of flabby around the around the belly, and I thought, well, he's not going to win. But he's all heart. I agree with you. They should go. These guys, you're right. They're warriors. I whether or not Lou Bercier has a career in mixed martial arts, I would absolutely watch him in Last of the Mohicans too. <laughs> Telling you, the guy would be a great villain. Put him in along there with West Duty from my native state of Oklahoma. Anyway, that is our preview show for. The UFC on Fox 6, Johnson versus Dodson, as well as a little added bonus of reviewing the first episode of Tough 17 on every week. Probably going to be the best tough season ever, the production value through the roof. Join us next week. We'll review the show in two parts. First part will be the prelims. Second part will be the main card. And of course, Marcus Mitchell will be joining me. So on behalf of the Lucky Rob podcast, Getting Lucky with, him, getting lucky with Robert Curtis, I bid you adieu, Marcus. Thank you guys for listening. It was fun. All right. Thanks, guys. See you.